Hi, this is Margaret Bird and welcome to Color Quest. I have a huge smile on my face because I am still riding high from my time at the Indigo Fest in the month of August. As you saw in last week's video, I gave an overview of a lot of what we worked on with this incredible plant called Indigo. One of the most beautiful things beyond the generosity of knowledge and skills that were given to us by the hosts Britt and Iris was that I got to bring home some fresh leaf indigo and it came straight from their gardens it was excess from the retreat and we're gonna work with it the next two weeks so thank you Britt and Iris for your generosity again with this beautiful blue plant. And today, let's go in search of that secret ingredient of Indie Rubin. So I've worked for several years now with Fresh Leaf Indigo, both with the color farm here, as well as with plants that I've grown myself. I have gotten really blue hands dyeing wool and cotton and silk with the salt rub method and the plunder method. And there's several videos that you can watch of all of the fun that I've had the past two years. I have a playlist down below all about indigo, so you can go there and catch up on all the fresh leaf fun that I've had. So a few things about fresh leaf indigo. This is Persicaria tinctoria, which grows really well in this part of the world. And it's also what I grow in my garden. It is something that once cut should be used relatively quickly. Now I think in past videos I've mentioned that you have a day or so, but in fact the fresh leaf I'm going to use today from the Indigo Festival was cut about a week ago, maybe a little bit longer. It's been kept in water and when I brought it home I put it into ice water and stored it in the fridge. It's been really hot here. Now you'll notice that some of the leaves are probably already past their prime and have already produced some of that beautiful blue. But in this salt rub method today, I don't mind. It's a pretty forgiving technique and I'm not looking for any traditional fresh leaf bluish green, but rather how we might be able to invite Indorubin onto our textile. <laughs> so exciting. Now I am not a scientist, a chemist, and even though Iris and Britt did a beautiful job of both talking about and showing us through song and acting, how the different chemicals inside of an indigo plant work and emerge, I'm not gonna be able to replicate that. Just know that there is the potential to have more than just blue and greenish colors coming from indigo. Indie Rubin will bring about reds, yellows, purples, and pinks. And what it requires is heat. So let's see if any of those Indie Rubin colors will join us today. Okay, let's talk fiber just for a minute. The cellulose fibers that do so well in an indigo vat don't do as well with fresh leaf indigo. But the light blues and teal greens that you can get are absolutely stunning. And it works beautifully and prefers to work with protein fibers like silk and wool. So today we'll be using silk. I happen to have some available and it'll be great to do these experiments on. The second thing I want to mention is that you do not need a mordant when you're working with 
indigo. There are already natural binding qualities within the plant itself, so it's not needed. The fiber I have has already been pre-treated, but that's because I keep a stash of it all ready to go. But know that you don't need to worry about doing any kind of a pre-treatment with a mordant on fiber with any of the ways in which you might use indigo. So since there's so much airplane traffic today, <laughs> I think I'll take the leaves inside and we'll take a look at what Brit and Iris gave to me. So I have my two pieces of silk here. They are just little handkerchiefs that I get from Dharma Trading. They're great for doing testing, but they're also finished. They've got nice edges with cotton thread, so everything dies. Now I have one that is actually pre-treated with a mordant, but not because I need it, just because that's what happens and I keep things around. It was treated with a alum mordant, so it didn't take on any color. This piece, however, I had pre-treated with a tannin, gallo tannin actually. I used it for a class, so it's got a slight color to it. Again, not necessary for indigo at all, but since I have these as samples, I'm gonna use them. I will therefore use this one in the salt rub that I'm going to do first. And then this one, I'm simply gonna put it right into the bag with the salted leaves, and we should get two pretty different results. Now I need to put these into water to soak. So let's do that, and then we will look at the leaves. So here is all of the beautiful fresh leaf that I got from Iris and Brit at the end of Go Fest. You can see that some of the leaves have already had their little blue dance going on inside and some are just sort of spent. But there's plenty here that looks good enough to be able to do the two projects that I'd like to do over the next two weeks. Today, will be just salt rub, but next week we're gonna look at how to make your own pigment from fresh leaf. Let's look at the color of the water. You can see it's got a little bit of that bluish tint to it. That blue green, as they call it, the mermaid tint started, but Anyway, keep that water, we'll use it inside of our salt rub when we start. Depending upon what you are dyeing in terms of the weight of fabric, you're gonna need at the very minimum a one-to-one -one ratio. And really, I tend to go up to a two or even four times in terms of leaves to the weight of fiber. So if I have one gram of fiber, I'm going to need at a minimum one gram of leaves, but even up to four. And you can do the math there because probably most of you will not be working with one gram of fiber. However, my silk is so light and so small, I'm just gonna eye it and know that I have a nice bowl filled with leaves. I absolutely love the salt rub method because you get to get your hands in it you will get blue hands, so if you don't want that, go ahead and put some gloves on. But it's as simple as stripping the leaves, adding a little bit of water, and in this case, we're gonna use some of that water that these have been soaking in. And I will be using kosher salt. It's a little bit bigger granules, and really get in there with my hands. I'll start breaking down the leaves that way, and then I'm simply gonna add the piece of silk that I had pre-treated. We'll start to get a color on that, and then we will be doing the next step, which is placing it into a bag, sealing it, and putting it out for a little solar activity. Let's start stripping back those leaves and get to mashing. can see sea of alpine green something that will stay with me sky 
is wrapped in blue Wish that I could share with you Like a photograph when times are good all right, I've been working this for about five minutes. You can see my hands are starting to pick up a little bit of that blue, but that's all I'm gonna do for now. I'm now gonna take the mash and a little bit of liquid, and I'm going to put it into a Ziploc bag. This is going to be my incubator, if you will. I will be putting this in there and then putting it out into the sun to sit and see if we might get some indie ruben. Life never felt so good. You're far, the distance doesn't break your heart. It gives us time to know our love. All right, that first one is packed up. Now I'm gonna do the second round. And this time I'm going to mash up the leaves with salt again, but I'm not going to put the fiber into the mash until I put it into the back. The hopes is that I will maintain some of that white background and then I'll get more of a speckled effect of which there may be some of those secret reds, purples, and pinks of Indoorubin. So let's start the second mash. Okay, now I'm gonna take this white piece of silk and I'm just going to wrap it up in the mash and then place it into the bag. I'll probably leave some of this juice behind because I'm really curious to see if we'll get kind of a more direct colors coming without dyeing the silk too much. It's already picking up that color. <laughs> There's the silk inside of the bag. Now I'll start to just add in the mash. Kind of put it all inside and around that silk. Oh yeah, and something to keep in mind, you can keep those stems that you've stripped the leaves from, put them into water and they will root out and then you can put them into the ground and grow more indigo. Or, like I did a few years ago, leave them on your windowsill. They'll keep growing and shooting out new leaves and eventually they went to seed. So don't throw those stems away if you have a place in which you can give them some water and sun, preferably some soil, and you will have more indigo. These are some of the stems that I also got they're already starting to root, and I'm going to be putting those into the ground once it cools off a little bit. I've put the two bags outside. We won't be getting any solar energy tonight, but I'll set them out tomorrow for a few hours, check on them, and maybe we'll be able to bring them back in and out of their bags relatively quickly in a couple of hours of some good hot sun. Here's the one that I did with the fiber inside and I got some juice in there. And this is the one where the fiber came just on its own. Look at how it's already turning it's that gorgeous blue. All right, go to sleep. We'll check on you tomorrow when you can get a suntan. Okay, these have been sitting here in the sun for most of the day. They've been in the bags for almost 24 hours, so I say we take it out and see if we got any Indoorubin. This was the second one we took, and I didn't put this into the leaves themselves, and oh boy, look at that. We definitely got some Indoorubin in this one. 
Oh wow, look at that. Okay, I love it. Look at those dark blues. Let me get all of this out and then I will open the other one. Wow, beautiful. One thing I did yesterday was that I kept the water that was left over from after I did the salt rub. It's got that beautiful blue color. I'm going to add this to a pigment extraction I'm gonna to try to do next week so that this is just some little added yummy juice. And I'm gonna go ahead and save this juice as well. So first I'm just gonna pour it off into here. So there we go. Indigo water to go with my pigment extraction. So this was the fiber that I put right into the leaves and mashed in. And you can see right away that it's a lot darker. So it might be a little harder to see the Indirubin, but we definitely got a lot of mottled effect here. Can't necessarily see it right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and rinse both of these actually. You can kind of see the pinkish tint, but I will rinse both of these now, put them out in the air to dry, and then we'll take a look at what we got. Oh, it sure is pretty. We'll also be keeping all of the leaves to add to my pigment extraction too. Here are results. Forgive the wrinkles, I don't have an iron right now, but wow, look at that. Do you see all of the red hues that are in this? It's incredible. This is the piece that we put in with the mash and mashed around, so it got a fairly dark background. It also has tannin, so that's gonna make some difference, but look, there's some yellow even. And then we got some really gorgeous blues in here as well, but you can see all interspersed. There's just all kinds of indirubin in there, just shining it its way through. Now this other piece that we did, which we just placed in with the mash and we didn't mash it together. I mean, you can really see the vibrancy of the reds and the pinks that came in. And look at how it's just interspersed with those dark blues. And oh, look at that. Wow, gorgeous. So obviously silk is really going to be a beautiful fiber to work with in this way. But you can see that it's the heat that allows Indorubin to be woken up and it may visit you if you're lucky. And this is such a great way to test it out and look at the beautiful results of these two mixtures with fantastic examples of Indorubin. Love it. What an incredibly easy way to work with Fresh Leaf to encourage Indorubin to visit you. So if it's the season for you now and you have access, give that a try. It's so simple and I love the surprise element. That's something that I truly enjoy. So next week on Color Quest, it's time for you to go through a video that is about trial and error and in the end result, not so much success. 
We are going to continue exploring indigo, fresh leaf that is, and we're gonna try to see if we can begin the pigment process, and that is extracting pigment from fresh leaf. And let me tell you something, it looks easy, but as with all good things, it takes a lot of effort and sometimes it doesn't work. So I hope you'll join me next week as we work our way through the process and talk a little bit about maybe some of the reasons why it didn't work. Anyway, have a great week and I can't wait to see you here next Friday. I think the summer months just invite a lot of people to fly their little planes.